Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest video in our series focused on IR careers. Uh, once again, we are joined by Smooch Repovich Reynolds, uh, founder and CEO of Smooch Unplugged. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Tim. I always enjoy being here and talking about career navigation, kind of in my blood. No, absolutely. Well, great to see you, Smooch. Um, and in today's video, we're going to discuss uh, planning your career over the next three to five years. Um, so, you know, we've seen a lot of changes in terms of what IR careers look like and where people come into the profession from. So, Smooch, to start us off today, I wanted to ask, you know, given all the change that we're seeing, how different is planning your career today versus how it was, say, five or 10 years ago? I think it's very different, Tim. I think there are so many opportunities and possibilities. It's really uh, an executive's you know, moment to lose, if you will. And I think um, one of the factors in all of this that people need to remember is you have to figure out who you are and where you're going and socialize it. Uh, if you don't talk to uh, your boss about it or others in and out of your company, the answer, as I say, is always no, because no one knows what your aspirations are. Great. Thank you, Smooch. And just to build on that topic a bit then, because, you know, as, as IR professionals are trying to navigate their career, then as sort of as you've, as you've alluded to, it's, it's helpful to have an idea of who you are and sort of where you want to go. But, you know, something that we've, I think, talked about a few times in the past is that you know, not everybody you know, has that information, not everyone has really thought hard about sort of what direction they want to go in. So, you know, when you're talking to IR professionals, what are some signs that maybe they're lacking a bit of direction in their career and, and what can they do to help themselves, help them in, in that area? The most important questions that I ask a candidate and Tim, you have to understand, I approach career navigation very differently than other recruiters, whether they're internal or external and certainly differently than most candidates. Um, I really like to focus on number one, intangible leadership attributes, but also kind of where a candidate's headset is. And there's no right or wrong answer. And I think we're accustomed to around the world that if you ask a question, there is an answer that you have to have. So one of the most important questions I ask candidates is talk to me about career aspirations. And I, it was really striking to me about four or five years ago, a woman who I was doing a video interview with said, I don't like that question. And my response to her was, you may not like it, but I want an answer. And the reason I wanted to push her on this is to really test her thinking about who she is and where she thought she was going or not. And so let's, let's pivot that now to hiring executives. They want to know that you have a directional sense of where you're headed. There is no right or wrong answer. Even if you say to them, well, I'd like to be a CFO someday, that they're not threatened by you potentially taking their job. Wouldn't it be nice if they had an IRO who could potentially be their successor because chances are they wanna move on and become a president of a company or a CEO. So I think just, in, again, investing in your own career and thinking about what are the possibilities and what feels right to you. And you can't do that scheduling one hour on a Friday afternoon to just sit and think about it. You have to put those thoughts in your head while you're driving out on the weekends, taking the kids to soccer practice or whatever you're doing. And over the long term, create kind of that, that framework of where you're headed. No, absolutely. Thank you so much, Smooch. And um, maybe just digging into that a little bit more. I mean, you were talking there about some of the conversations that, you know, so, um, a candidate might have with the company when they're, you know, thinking about moving into a new role and sort of mapping out where they'd like to go and, and you know, not, not being afraid of really saying, you know, where, what, what direction you'd like to go in. So what, what are those kind of conversations like nowadays? And, you know, to what extent are IR professionals having conversations where they're being really clear about sort of where they'd like to be, not just in terms of the immediate role, but in terms of future roles potentially in the company as well. I think I think IROs struggle with this. And, you know, it's interesting because um, forever uh, candidates have said to me, I want to work for a management team that's transparent and genuine and, you know, where I can have that open relationship. Yet when it comes to interviewing for a role, 
um, the IRO isn't necessarily uh, living that behavior themselves, which I think is odd. Um, you know, there's a, we talk about gravitas as a key intangible leadership attribute. How do you set up and deliver a message to a management team member um, in a way that they will hear it, accept it, and process it? It's the same thing in an interview. You know, if you really do aspire, for example, to be a CFO, there's a way to set that up and deliver it to the CFO that you're interviewing with. And I, I highly suggest to IR talent, as I do to my clients, that you shouldn't think that an, that an interview is going to be a structured, um, I'm going to be, have a bunch of questions fired at me that I need to answer. Have a conversation. Get to know the person. I think one of the most frustrating comments that people, IR executives make to me when I'm giving presentations or in the Q&A is someone will raise their hand and they'll say, I, I don't, my job, I'm a year into it and it's not what I thought it would be. Well, okay, how, what did you think it would be? <laughs> did, did you, I call it setting the table. Did you ask the CFO in your second meeting with that person, did you start to ask the questions that are going to reveal more of the character of that person? And is that character aligned with who you are and your value system? And did you cross the bridge of what are the clear expectations that person has of you? Those are all natural um, questions and they're fair game to ask in those interviews. Otherwise, how, do you, how can you possibly make a decision about accepting a job or not if you haven't kind of been transparent and genuine in uh, communicating your own expectations and setting that table. Hey, thank that you so much. Sense? Absolutely. No, thank you so much, Smooch. And, and just in terms of that piece about sort of understanding yourself better, and that's an important part of, you know, going into those discussions, I wanted to ask you about something you've mentioned to me before, which is a careers bucket list and how that mm -hmm. can be useful to people. And so tell us what, you know, to what extent do people tend to have a careers bucket list? Is that something that you come across commonly or not? And, and how can company, how can people think about, you know, having a, a bucket list of things they want to do and how can that give them some, some direction in their careers? It's a great, it's a great question, uh, Tim. And I think, yes, everybody should have a bucket list. It's not just meant for vacations and where you want to travel in the world. And this goes back to kind of the fundamentals of thinking about your career. And it changes every year, every two to three years, every decade, which, you know, I talk about decades uh, in careers as seasons of our careers. What you aspire to be or do when you're in your 20s is going to be different, I hope, than when you're in your 40s or your 50s, all of which are legit, but they change over time. And so I think having a bucket list is important. I, I do that for myself um, because there are certain things I want to achieve. And um, you know, you have, sometimes you have to get a little bit more experience in certain ways to be able to get the loftier, achieve the loftier goals. Um, but I do think it, it, again, goes back to the basics of investing in your own career. And by investment, I mean, thinking about what it is that's intellectually interesting to you, psychologically and emotionally gratifying to you, um, and framing that for yourself. You're not always going to achieve 100% of it, but wouldn't it be great if you could achieve 90% of it? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great way to think about it. You know, it's, it's a bucket list. It's not something that you have to complete, but just thinking about it and putting it together is going to be a really useful sort of process to go through. Um, Absolutely. And then to finish off our conversation today, um, as, as we normally do, I'd like to ask you just for one takeaway or action that our professionals uh, listening today can go away and maybe use to have a sort of better understanding of what they want out of their careers or what direction they'd like to go in. Well, I'll give you one piece of advice and, and I'll give you a prediction for uh, uh, your viewers. The piece of advice is have a viewpoint. I think people who are, you know, candidates and searches get swept up in this idea that they're wanted. They're being courted for a new opportunity. You've got this shiny object of a new company that's kind of a little sexy and interesting and different than what you're doing today. And what happens with that is your thinking gets clouded about the fundamentals, the bucket list, the goals you want to achieve. 
and, and your sense of direction. One of the biggest complaints that CFOs share with me is executives, and not just IR professionals, others executives in a company don't have a viewpoint that's backed up by either marketplace intelligence, experience and wisdom, or whatever. And I think when you're navigating your career, you have to have a viewpoint because I'll tell you with, without question, each individual is not qualified for every job. It doesn't mean everybody isn't smart and they don't bring something valuable to the table. But those candidates who say to me, well, I could work in any industry. I could do this. I could do that. Well, the minute they say they're sitting in a technology company today and I say to them, I've got a great opportunity in a consumer packaged goods company. They're like, oh my God, I would never work for, you know, Frito-Lay or whatever company it is. Well, okay. That's a person who hasn't stopped. They're not listening to themselves talk. They're not thinking. They don't have a, at least a framework and a plan put together. My prediction for people is if IROs coming out of this pandemic have sharpened their thinking and they're more astute as listeners and observers, they will have a uh, great line of sight on career aspirations and they'll have a viewpoint that they are unafraid of expressing to a hiring executive. And I think that's really, really important. Be clear about who you are and be clear about how you think about and feel about certain components in business because hiring executives want that. They don't want the right answer. They'd like a right answer, but there is no right answer in most of this. There's no playbook. You have to create your own playbook. That's half the fun, actually. Absolutely. No, I think that that's great advice, Mitch. As you say, there's no, you know, there's no right answer here, but you have to work out what what you want and what works for you and sort of, you know, build that, um, you know, that profile. But um, thank you so much for joining us today and again sharing your your thoughts and expertise with us. We really appreciate it. Always great to speak to you. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me. I'll look forward to talking with you again. And uh, if anyone out there in the audience has any ideas for future topics that you'd like us to cover in one of these videos, then please do get in touch with us at editorial at um, But from us, thank you so much. Uh, see you again soon.